first off, like I said, thank you so much for tuning in today. So in today's topic, what we're going to be doing, what we're going to be doing today is um, we're going to be doing a Q&A at the end. But first, I'm going to talk about how I got my business started and where I'm at now. Uh, I get tons of... Okay, so it looks like you guys can hear me pretty well, but it looks like my video feed is just really bad. So like I said, <laughs> hopefully we'll figure that out later. Um, so first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to start off with my story about how I started my landscaping company. And just so that you guys know, this video will be uploaded to YouTube afterwards. So uh, if you guys want to rewatch it, uh, that's great. Um, like I said, I'm really sorry for the lagging. This is our first thing. Uh, just put all this together last night. I was up till about 1 o'clock getting everything. I actually had to Walmart to get a different webcam. And, uh, and then I got everything uh, started. So let's give this a shot. <clears throat> so first we'll start with how I started my company and then afterwards uh, we'll do a Q&A. Uh, a lot of questions I get is how I started my company or how you can start your company. And you have to remember uh, the way I started it is completely different from the way you will start your company because different region, um, so different kind of equipment and depends on what kind of field you're going in with, with whether if it's lawn care or whether it is uh, landscaping. Uh, so first we'll start out with um, you know my backstory. So first when I was um, probably around 15 years old, I started doing side work for some, um, from, for some older people, which turned out to be years later, um, I called them my adopted grandparents. I never really had grandparents. My grandparents passed away when I was really young and I never really had a close relationship with them. So these people kind of, they never had kids. So they kind of took me in as their uh, grandchild and I took them in as my grandparents <coughs> and um, basically who I call my grandpa uh, I would sh here I'll show you guys actually on the feed or no I'm sorry I don't have it I will show it in the um, re you know once I get everything done uh, and repost it on YouTube we'll do it then and uh, luckily my grandpa he basically they took me under their wings and uh, basically taught me about how to he taught me about chainsaws um, falling trees I would fall trees he has about 17 acres and I would fall about 70 80 foot trees and uh, we would have, he would tell me like land it here and I would drop it there and stuff like that. So anyways, he got me into the whole thing and uh, I started learning from that. <coughs> uh, then I started working at a lavender farm here in my area. Lavender is pretty uh, popular. And so um, what happened was I met my best friend. Uh, his name is Jesse, really good friend of mine. And um, just absolutely, you know, he actually was my best man at my wedding. Uh, so what happened was on the farm, him and I started to do a lot of the landscaping work. We were doing a lot of the mulch install, uh, basically keeping up on the weeding, mowing, and just everything from the outside. And <clears throat> he actually came out with the idea of him and I coming into partnership and starting a landscaping company. Um, my opinion, if you're looking at starting a, a partnership with someone, uh, partnerships tend to not work too well. Um, they usually tend to fall apart because what happens is one person wants to be the head of the company. And when you have two heads bunting together, uh, that does not work out well at all. I was actually, my second business, I was actually looking at starting a detailing company. I was looking at going into business with a, a friend of mine. And our first meeting that we had, we were just trying to work out prices and get the idea uh, figured out. And uh, him and I were already butting heads and we never even already started. Uh, so if you're looking to do a partnership, I would honestly not recommend that unless it's someone absolutely close. Even my best friend, I probably wouldn't even go partnership with him. I would look at sole proprietor <coughs> and then having you be the head uh, of the company. Uh, so basically what happened was he thought about let's start a landscaping company together. And we were going to call it Wow Landscape. That was, you know, this was uh, years ago. I was only uh, 17 at the time, about almost 18. And um, basically what happened was we decided to start our own companies, which was a good thing. I started Ambrose Landscaping. He started his. And um, and my, uh, let's see, and I was just doing side work for clients, people I was getting in from um, just whoever would call me, from mostly my grandparents, whoever they recommended to me. They basically got the ball rolling. And so what happened was, uh, I decided to, sorry, I lost track of thought. Um, but what happened was my best friend decided he was working for a property maintenance company called Landmark here in my local area. And I'm not sure <coughs> how expandable they are. Um, but basically what happened was he decided to move out of town. And so he uh, instead went and uh, gave me all this client. So my first year in business, um, hey babe, my first year in business, I started out in property management. And so um, one thing I did not like about property management was the money wasn't consistent. What would happen was the, the property manager for this company, what they would do is people that have rental homes would actually um, 
what they would do is they would rent them out to this um, kind of a middleman and the middleman would hire me. So what would happen is when renters would move in, if they didn't take care of the landscape when they would move out, uh, Landmark, this middleman would call me and say, hey, go clean up the yard, go mow it, do this, 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 give us a bid, and then um, we'll pay you. So what would happen though, the worst thing about it is that I wouldn't get paid until new renters would come in and they would get their first month's um, safety deposit. So sometimes I wouldn't get paid for about a month to five months. Uh, the most ever being, I think, probably six months. And so that was not good because since it was my first year in business, I didn't have contract jobs. I didn't know how to do contract jobs. <clears throat> and so basically I did not have a steady income. So my first year in business, I actually also had a second job. I would work nights. So during the day, I would work landscaping, doing all my clients. And then at night, I would go and work from, start at about eight, nine o'clock, and we would work from anywhere from five to seven o'clock in the morning. And I would basically go clean floors. We would do the buffing and the waxing and stuff like that, kind of like at not Walmart, but stores like that, like supermarkets and stuff like that. And uh, that was not fun at all. Uh, my first year in business, I made about five, $6,000, which is not much at all. That's not even enough to pay the bills. That was my first year moving out of my parents' house. And so um, when it came to that winter, landscaping just completely went <coughs> blank, like absolutely nothing since I didn't have contract jobs. I didn't have steady money coming in. So I was basically relying on my night job. Well, my night job wound up just affecting me and every other um, job I took care of. So I actually wound up leaving that job. Actually, in a sense, I was kind of fired. Um, the guy, he didn't let me go, but he was, uh, I was going to be on, on call, which is really a sense of you're fired. And so basically I went about, uh, about two months in the winter, I think November and December of just absolutely nothing. Um, I was already three behind, three months behind on rent. Uh, I had no money in the bank at all. I was slowly getting paid from that, you know, middleman job, just small checks, hundred, maybe $200 max here and there. It was definitely not enough to, um, to stay, uh, busy, but you know, I, you know, like I said, luckily my landlord was one of my good friends. <clears throat> so he was being uh, very generous and me getting two, three months behind on rent. And I have to say that was probably the darkest moment of my life. Um, basically, I was, I was stuck at home. My truck was having problems. I had no income. I had no money in the bank. I had a thousand dollars owed on my credit card with zero in my checking account. And it was by far the, I consider it the darkest part of my life. And uh, luckily, uh, with some uh, good tapes, listening to a pastor I listened to, and some good prayer, I was able to get out of that. <clears throat> I had um, one client call me and say, hey, you know, we, uh, we have this one yard we want you to do. If you can just go take care of it, then that's fine. And I said, okay, I'll give it a shot. I was about to quit my business right then and there, um, my first, not even a year in business. Because <clears throat> I started my business when I was 18 in February, about three weeks before I turned 19. So in a sense, I was 19, but I was actually 18. And uh, so three weeks before February, so we're actually coming up to almost our six-year mark. So what happened was this client gave me a call and said, hey, I got this property. If you could just go clean it up and maintain it for a little bit, then that'd be fine. So I said, okay, fine. It's some extra work, whatever. And at that time, I actually moved back in with my parents <coughs> because with me being over three months on rent, it wasn't fair for my landlord to not be able to pay his uh, house payment or at least have that over his head. So what happened was it led from that client and then the next door neighbor came and then neighbor and then neighbor and then I had clients from the previous year. Luckily, we started getting out of that winter, getting more into March, April and um, and work really started picking up from there and uh, life was starting to become really well. The moment I thought that things were going so well, I decided to uh, propose to my beautiful wife who I met back in eighth grade and uh, we've been together since and so uh, we got married four months later and um, about a month or so after we got married because the landscaping was doing okay we were back into the mowing season I got my first call from my first commercial client which was discount tire as a lot of you know and so they are actually by far my oldest <coughs> commercial client this will be our fifth year maintaining them they're my first thing uh, my first one basically and what's nice about them is that they're right on the main strip here in my town so it was like perfect advertisement and the way I got that job was you know, a lot of people always ask me, we'll do another uh, feed on this. Uh, I want to be able to you know, skip forward as much as I can through this. I want to try to cover the basics and then um, uh, let's see, and then uh, and be able to answer you guys' questions. So <clears throat> we'll, we'll do our best. 
Uh, but the, the way I got that was uh, my brother actually worked at Discount Tire. And at the time, uh, they were, the manager was not happy with uh, their current landscaper. So my brother told uh, his boss about it. They called me and said, hey, give us a bid. And so I put a bid together, and uh, which I was pretty scared about because it was my first commercial bid. I went to my truck, wrote it down, went right into the manager and said, here's my bid. He says, you know what? That's what we're charging our current landscaper. If you go $15 lower, we will hire you right now. And $15 was not too bad at the time since I was making almost nothing. So luckily we signed it right then and there and I got my first commercial account and we did our first uh, contract. And uh, another video that we'll do later is how to put a contract together. As of right now, we're just starting how I started my business. And then from there, it was a few months later, uh, things were going pretty well. I wasn't staying too full time in it. So I was doing, um, at the time I was, I think, engaged and partially married. I was also doing some roofing work with uh, my wife's uncle. And so um, while we were doing some roofing work, uh, we were talking, we were in this one condo association and one of the... Um, the homeowners that uh, whose roof we were doing asked me, they said, hey, um, you know, hey, do you guys know any landscapers? Because we're looking for some, or they asked me, um, what what do you do? And I said, oh, I do, I have a landscaping business on the side of this, and then I also help my uh, uncle out. And they said, hey, actually, we're actually, our condo association is actually looking for a uh, landscaper. You should give them a bid. So I went and talked to the main person who I needed to talk to, and uh, with some talking through there and working with them, I was able to sign a large condo association and then a second one after that. So I was able to get two large condo associations the first year. So within two years of business, my second year, I took over Discount Tire and then two large condo associations, which was really amazing. I was really happy about that. And then um, basically from there, um, like I said, I want to be able to save some time for some <coughs> Q&A. But basically from there, I was able to gain a little bit more confidence from taking my first commercial account. Because basically what I would do is, since Discount Tire was right there on the main strip, what I would do is I would tell people, I maintain this account, go look at it. It was perfect advertisement. Everyone passes by it every single day. So it was actually pretty well, uh, did pretty well. And so I, I gained a lot of confidence. Uh, I learned how to sign contracts actually from the condo associations. And then basically, because what they did was they provided me with a uh, with a contract, and basically I took the um, basically the foundation of that contract and kind of revised it and made it my own, and that's how I actually got into contracts, and that's something we will like I said talk about another time. So, anyways, like I said, we can I don't want to go into too far of details every single year. That's basically how I got started, how I went from zero to nothing. Uh, we are almost in our sixth year of business, and uh, we now make over, uh, we have over $100,000 alone in just contracts, and that's not including our weekly mowings, any side jobs that we take care of, and uh, things are doing pretty well. And uh, as of right now, we have one full-time employee <coughs> who does really well, and uh, basically, I've actually started my whole company with just you know one employee. First, it was me, and basically what I would do is I would push myself work as much as I can until I needed to hire someone, and then we hired someone, and basically what we're doing is we're pushing him. Him and I are trying to get as much done as we can uh, before we hire a third guy because I would rather give my one guy as many hours as I can uh, instead of hiring two guys and you know having them be part-time. So um, that's basically where we're at now. Um, about a little over two years ago, I think this will be almost our third year on YouTube, my wife had the idea of why don't you start a YouTube channel. And I didn't want to at first. If you guys watched my first videos, I was not energetic at all. I didn't even want to do them. And trust me, I, I didn't I'm not good at being in front of a camera. I'm okay now, you know, with recording myself as, you know, over the past two, three years, you kind of build that confidence. I'm not good doing it in front of when people are watching me. Um I was a little nervous to do my live video, but uh, luckily it's not too bad at all when I'm talking about landscaping, something I absolutely love. It's uh, it's really good. So <coughs> anyways, uh, why don't you guys go ahead and start leaving your uh, questions uh, over there below, and, um, and then we'll get to them. So I'll go ahead and get those questions in here. I'll go ahead and post that real quick. Uh, let's see. Uh, go ahead and, and post your questions and uh, I am sorry for posting this at the same time when the uh, you know the uh, the games are going the NFC games I know the uh, Packers and the uh, Falcons are playing and uh, so we'll probably start doing it on Saturdays <clears throat> from now on I just wanted to get something out there because uh, we was pretty excited about uh, doing this so it looks like we got 19 watchers watching this guys uh, thank you so much for watching it um, you know it's actually just kind of an honor to be able to sit here and talk to you guys 
uh, about me. You know, I, when I first started my YouTube, like I said, I was not expecting on getting a lot of views and people following me, nor did I ever think that companies would be reaching out to me to say, hey, why don't you do some uh, video feed for us or like video um, reviews for some of their products. So, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, something's going on with my camera. Um, anyways, so yeah, go ahead and uh, leave your comments and I'll, I'll get to those soon. Uh, but uh, YouTube has definitely been amazing. It really has helped with um, uh, our advertisement and just getting our names out there. Because when you go to Google, uh, our name is like number one, number two in our area. So that really helps. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, anyways, so it looks like we got our first question from Premier Landscaping. And his question is, uh, why did you purchase your Hustlers? Uh, that's a good question. Actually, I have some pictures I'll show you right here. I uh, oh, no, I guess I won't. I'll have to show you them uh, later. Uh, so what happened was, first off, <coughs> uh, I used to have a Toro Zero Turn mower. And it was my first Zero Turn. I bought it right when we took over Discount Tire. That was the first one I bought because I needed a Zero Turn because I wanted to look as professional as possible. I was using a, a Craftsman Lawn Tractor. And... Um, the reason why I did that was my Toro was over 11 years old. That thing was falling apart and things were going out one after another and I was starting to get behind on jobs. So in my area, I had uh, I have only two um, contract, not contractors, but places that sell lawnmowers. Uh, one of them was a Hustler. They used to be an Exmark dealer, but they were a Hustler dealer, a Cub Cadet, and they are now a Walker dealer. And then there was another one that was a Husqvarna Kubota in like a Gravely. I first went to go look at the, the Husqvarnas because I was just doing research. I didn't know that much about Zero Turns at the time. And so basically uh, what happened was <clears throat> I went and looked at the Hustler. I didn't want to spend any more than like $9,000, $10,000. I uh, went and looked at the Husqvarna, thought it was nice, needed a bagging system with it. And so um, their price was too much for the Husqvarna. So I went to the other dealer because I had a local buddy that had Hustlers because Hustlers were really bit, uh, you know, big at the time since it's a small town. We only had really one dealer around here that sold zero turns. Uh, that was basically the main dealer. And so what happened was um, I went and looked at the Hustler. It was like right in my price range. It was perfect. I said, yep, let's go ahead and do it. And it was a good mower and it's been a great mower ever since. And then I bought the uh, the Hustler X1. I was looking at switching over to Walkers at the time, but they were too spendy, which I wound up spending the same amount on my Hustler X1. And I went and bought uh, the Hustler X1. So uh, they are great mowers. I do like them for my area and for what I do. I would prefer a Walker, and I'm really happy. I do have the current Walker, the uh, T25i. Plan on buying a second one this coming year, uh, actually this year. Uh, hopefully within the next month or two, once I sell the Hustlers. And, uh, and so, yeah, that's the reason why I bought the Hustlers. Basically, we only had one dealer here. I didn't know much about Zero Turns at the time. Had heard great things about them because they were really popular in my area. And uh, so I went with them. So I went and did that. So thanks so much for your question, Premier. We'll go to our second one. Uh, don't know how to pronounce it. K-Y-A or K-W-A-M-E. We'll just leave it at that. Uh, oh. Hold on. Uh, hopefully my, my stream's okay. Oh, okay, yeah. Stream resume. Sorry about that, guys. Don't know what's going on. <coughs> um, okay, sorry. If you guys can hear me, if uh, the stream's going good, go ahead and let me know. I know that this hasn't been... Uh, let's see. Is this still going? Yeah, really sorry about Like I said, this is the first time I've done live. Um, wanted to... Uh, you know, make it nice, but of course, we'll have to work out some kinks. Okay, cool. Awesome. Thanks, Eric. Okay, cool. So next, we're going to start with a um, uh, good question from, like I said, I wasn't sure how to uh, pronounce your first name, K-W-A-M-E. Uh, why do you do contracts? Now, this is a really, uh, this is actually a really good question, and the reason why I do contracts is that around here, uh, oh, good question. Around here, we don't get snow removal in the wintertime. So basically, you have summer to make money. In the wintertime, like right now, January, there's almost nothing to do, especially when you're starting out company around my area, especially when you don't get snow. Having uh, contract jobs is a good way to keep a consistent uh, in, uh, money coming in, uh, income. So what's nice is that we only sign... As of right now, we only sign one-year contracts and weekly mowings, and we try to push the contracts as much as we can because what happens is that um, 
like I said, you have a nice steady flow of income. So later on, if I ever want to buy a house, which we're trying to do in the future or really soon, uh, if we ever want to do that, with that steady income coming in, they want to really see that uh, a lot. Uh, what's also nice about the contracts too, because uh, definitely condo associations and commercial accounts want your contracts because basically they want a binding covenant of, okay, what are your responsibilities? What are ours? What are we paying for? And they want to see that in writing. So that's another big reason why contracts are important. Um, but also is, uh, like I said, the biggest reason for me is a steady income. Uh, what I was saying in the beginning was since there's not, uh, we don't get snow removal here. And when we do, it's very little and it's hard to kind of get into it. Um, we don't have a good income in the wintertime. Really, the only things around my area that you can do is pruning, mulch install, and kind of yard cleanup. That's really it. There's no mowing. There's absolutely nothing. And there's no snow. Uh, so having the year contracts, we're able to keep that steady income. It's the same throughout the whole entire year. Um, that way, it's easier to uh, work on budgets. It's easier to work on your profit and losses. Uh, and it's just easier to know this is exactly what we're making every single month. And of course, in the summer month, things rise up when we do our weekly accounts and when we do other stuff like that. Uh, but other than that, um, there uh, I, I would really recommend them. We'll go ahead and probably do a separate video on this. Uh, that way we can get more in depth into it. Uh, but that was a really good question. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> um, so uh, another guy, uh, next question is from Eric Rice. I believe that's your name. Sorry, I'm really bad with names. What are your plans for 2017? That is a really good question. Um, of course, our plan every single year is to grow and um, do better than we can. Uh, last year, we did really well. Our goal was to reach, our last year was the first, not this last year, 2016, but 2015. Our goal was to reach over six figures, which we were able to do that and succeed in that. This year, we were able to reach well over that even more because we did a lot more install jobs. So basically, our goal this year uh, is to um, basically expand more into landscaping installation. Uh, around my area, uh, we're really well known for our condo associations and some commercial accounts. I already have quite a few of the big accounts in my area. And the other company that does too, he's, he's a fairly large company compared to me. And uh, so he's had them for quite a while. So uh, basically our biggest goal this year is to get more into landscaping installation and get more advertising for that because we're more well known for our lawn care and our property maintenance. Now, when I first started out in my company, I actually wanted to do more of a landscaping install. Uh, that was my dream. I love shows like uh, Turf Wars and uh, what are some of the other uh, De Desperate Landscapes. And there's another one I always, Yard Crashers. I, I love Yard Crashers. That's such a great show. And uh, that's the kind of stuff I really want to do. And um, But basically, um, we were getting more calls for yard maintenance and stuff like that. Because since I was such a young kid, when I started at 19, I didn't have the equipment to really get into the install. So we were focusing more on in, uh, maintenance. And that's what we really got into. So now we're known for our maintenance. Now we want to start reaching more into um, construction. Um, a lot of the companies around here that do construction at the time, there's several large companies around here that have been doing it for over 20, 30 something years. So for us, it was hard to kind of get into that. So uh, it was a little bit easier to get into the maintenance part. So that's why we started striving for that more. But what's happening is that these companies are looking at possibly going into retirement because they've been around for so long. So now we're looking at getting in that niche and getting our name in there uh, before it you know, completely shuts down. So hopefully, um, so that's kind of our biggest goals for 2017. And uh, yeah, I know that the feed is really choppy. I'm really sorry about that, guys. And hopefully we'll get that. Like I said, I'm recording this right now on my computer, so this will be uploaded onto YouTube. So if I answered your question and you didn't get a full answer, uh, be sure to check that out in a little bit. So let's go ahead and go to um, the next question, which was from, uh, sorry, I can't pronounce your name, uh, K-W-A-M-E. Uh, what do you suggest, uh, suggest as your most effective form of advertising? Uh, definitely social media has been pretty good, but uh, for me in my local area, I get a lot of compliments on my logos, on my tra uh, trailers. And also, I have three large accounts on the main strip in my town. Everyone knows I do discount tire because I've been doing it for five years. They see my big trailer with my big logo sitting up there. And uh, so for me personally, a lot of it was my trailers. It's They just stand out. It's a big trailer. It's a big logo, and that's what they see. But they, I think the second biggest thing is that since I'm right there on Main Street and I drive through town every single day to go to our same account, people constantly tell me how they always see me. 
And so I get a lot of um, feedback from that. So definitely, like I said, just to recap, uh, logos on trailers, uh, <coughs> being on the main strip, and then also uh, the third one and final one would probably be social media. It's another big one. Uh, so thank you so much for that. Uh, one from uh, the AZGB1, would you ever get a Ram truck? No, not really. I'm a huge Ford guy. I'm a third generation, possibly a fourth generation Ford family. My grandpa, he was a Ford guy. He had a Ford Thunderbird, Ford trucks, just everything. My dad had Ford trucks, Ford vans, Ford cars. Me and my brother, we have. I have nothing but Ford trucks. The only trucks I've ever had is a Ford. I've had my F-154, my Super Duty, my Ranger. My wife has a Ford Explorer. We had another Ford Explorer. And then uh, the only other vehicle I had that wasn't a Ford was a Saturn. It was given to me for free, and then I got rid of it. So I'm not really a Ram guy. I do like the trucks. If it ever came down to it, if I ever got sick of it and just didn't care, then I would probably go with a Ram. Probably no problem, but I'm more of a Ford guy, so I'm going to stick with that. So thank you so much. Uh, let's see. We'll go ahead and answer uh, two more questions. We're already reaching over uh, 36 minutes, so we won't get to all your questions today, but we'll be sure to do another live stream. Hopefully next week we can get all of this, these kinks figured out. Uh, so this is from Riley Dempster. Uh, what is the single biggest move you have made to grow your business? Equipment, advertising, advertising tell me. and or You tell me, and I will tell you. The biggest move I probably ever made was, um, gosh, honestly, just going after the accounts. My first three big accounts, Discount Tire and the two condo associations, if I did not act fast on those accounts, I could have easily lost them. And I think that's the, best, the biggest thing I can say. You can advertise all you want, uh, but if you're not getting these bids to these people and you're not fast and you know, making it available to them, uh, then they're not going to come after you. And so growing my business, going after the accounts I want to, and when People approach me when I when and that's the biggest thing when you hear something if you hear of hey I hear this place is looking at hiring um, <coughs> or this place is you know looking for a new landscape go after it and I've done that so many times where I've heard that and I'll tell you I'll tell you this quick story right now uh, one another large uh, condo association we take it's right across from Discount Tire it's been in a few of our videos it was in one of our riding shotguns not too long ago I think it was episode 15 maybe 14. Uh, and that's right there on the main strip. What happened was one of the residents that lives there came over to Discount Tire when we were mowing. And since he lives across there, he sees us mowing Discount Tire all the time. Really nice guy. Absolutely love him. He said, hey, um, you guys do amazing work. We watch you. I watch you every single day when you guys go and work over there. You guys do great work. I heard that there was a landscaper that we're possibly looking for a new landscaper at our condo association. Why don't you go over there and give him a bid? So I did. I, I called the lady. I went and talked to the manager and I said, hey, you know, I heard that you were possibly looking for a new landscaper. And she says, no, we're not. I said, OK, that's fine. I said, is there any chance I can at least send you a bid just in case something happens? And she says, yeah, that sounds fine. So about maybe four or five months later, out of nowhere, I get a call from her. and She says, hey, guess what? Uh, our landscaper just called us today and he said uh, that he's quitting. He's not even coming. He's quitting right now today. We need a landscaper. Come down here. We'll sign your contract and you'll start with us. And I said, sounds great. And that's how I got it. So when you hear something, go after it. And that's probably one of the biggest uh, moves I ever made is just ambition, just going after that, really listening. And if someone tells you something, um, you know, my pastor always told me, turn over every rock. You know, some are not going to open doors. Sometimes you got to you know, knock the door down. Like when I told the lady, well, let me just give you a bid just in case. If she would have said, we're not looking for a landscaper. And I said, okay, that's fine. And I left, I would probably would have never gotten the job. But since I said, well, let me at least give you a bid uh, so that you have it just in case something happens. And guess what? They called me a few months later and said, hey, let's hire you. I was hired that day. We signed the contract and uh, they've been happy ever since. I've been with them for, I think, over three years now. And um, I get along with them very well, and they're really happy with my work because we get things done, you know. So that was a great question. Um, so um, <clears throat> it looks like we're getting a lot of uh, good stuff coming in. Uh, so equipment-wise, what's probably the biggest, best equipment I would say is probably my diesel truck. Uh, this is the same one from Riley uh, with the biggest move. And then with equipment, I have to say that was probably the best overall. I got the truck for about $3,900. And sadly, I had to put over $10,000 into it, um, but uh, it was just a steal of a truck, a dump, tr a dump truck with a 7.3 turbo diesel. You don't get them, you won't see them that cheap 
uh, anymore, uh, you know, 3,900 bucks. But I had to put quite a lot of money into it. Brand new tire tires. I had to put walls on it, new windshield, uh, new injectors, glow plugs, cover gasket. I mean, just everything. Um, just one thing after another. Uh, all brakes all the way around. Uh, but that thing has definitely saved us a lot with that. With the truck being a 450, a Super Duty, I do have to have commercial insurance for it, which really sucks. Um, but other than that, it's a, it's a good truck. And um, so, <coughs> yeah, good question. But uh, what's nice about that truck is that I can tow anything I want. I can haul anything I want. And uh, no matter, you know, what I hook up to my trailer is going to tow it. You know, with my new dump uh, trailer that I got, uh, sorry, my truck, but with my dump trailer that I just got in my recent video, I was towing about 10,000 pounds of gravel over more than that. And the, tra and the trailer uh, weighs about 5,000 pounds alone. So, you know, we're hauling over 15,000 pounds and that truck does it perfectly. If I would have gotten a 250 or my 150 definitely would not be able to do that. So equipment wise, that's good for advertisement. I honestly think probably the best thing I did was, you know, my logos on my trailer, but honestly, social media, I mean, it's free. Uh, I was able to get a hold of you guys on YouTube. You guys love watching my videos. I hope, um, from the likes, I, I, I would assume you guys would, uh, but you know, YouTube really, and doing social media like Instagram, that really put my name out there, especially in my local area. I was able to meet uh, Adam, if you're watching, or if you're going to watch this later, hey, hey buddy, and uh, he's a guy in my local area that came up to me when I was dumping some yard waste and said, hey, I watched your YouTube channel. And just uh, about a week ago, um, I went and had coffee with him, and he has a business here in this local area, as well as another buddy of mine. So all three of us went to got together, and we basically have a business meeting and uh, we're just all talking and um, basically what we're going to do is once a month get together, share ideas, even though in some ways we're competition, but in some ways we're not because we kind of go after different stuff. Um, but luckily, we're just going to all get together, encourage each other and help each other grow. So uh, thank you so much, Riley. That was a great question. Uh, I'm going to answer two more if I don't um, <coughs> get to them real fast, or at least I'll try to answer some really fast. Uh, but this is going a little bit longer than I wanted, but sounds like you guys are enjoying it because I'm getting more guys so uh this is from janey uh law and landscaping llc how's the walker mower work i uh, about to get one love the walker it's amazing the only thing uh in my recent video that i talked about was it does horrible going up hills which is true uh going up them forwards they absolutely suck like they have no power at all uh if i got possibly different tires maybe but sorry my next sorry um but if you go backwards up them, they work really well. But I absolutely love this mower. I honestly wish I would have started my company out with this mower instead of the Hustlers. The Hustlers did good at the time. But the Walker gives me that perfect even cut because of the front floating deck. I would honestly highly recommend that uh, mower. Usually, you know, this is how fights start between landscapers about which mower is the best. And I will say there are some, you know, things about the walkers that aren't the greatest. But honestly, I, I really like the walker. I would hi highly recommend it to everyone. I'm selling my two hustlers and I'm buying a hopefully a new one really soon. Um, but definitely I would really look at walkers. They're a good job. So thank you for that question. Uh, this one was for Eric uh, Rise again. Why are you selling the Xmark 30? Good question. I've been uh, postponing. I was going to do that video yesterday. I'll probably do a video today and go further into depth. Uh, but basically, the biggest reason why I'm selling the X Mark 30 is because the maintenance on them. What happens is that the belts get stretched out so fast on those mowers uh, that the blade speed doesn't stay consistent. So there's times where the RPMs are nice and high, and the blades are good, and you're getting a nice even cut. And then what happens is the belt starts to um, starts to stretch, and so your blade speed's not as good as it used to be. Even and the belts just go up fast. And basically what happens is the grass starts to tear. You're not getting a nice even cut. It's not cutting all the grass. It's kind of skipping over some. So I had the Toros. I had the X Marks. I tried both. Used both for over a year. Had employees that used them and done plenty of videos on them. Uh, but it's time for me to go switch back to my Hondas. I absolutely love Hondas. I'm a huge Honda fan. Um, I think the concept of the 30-inch mowers are great. But I think there's still some kinks that they need to work out. I don't think it's the greatest. Um, but anyways, that's why I'm selling. I'll do a video soon. I actually applied today, of like further in depth, why we're really selling it. But that's basically the the basics of uh, that. Plus, basically, the Walker mowers have almost eliminated the use of a 30 inch mower too. So that's another big reason. But like I said, I'll, I'll be sure to cover that in a separate video. So so thank you so much for that question. Uh, let's go ahead and go to the next one. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is from Kevin Fernandez. Uh, how do you get to YouTube? How did you get to YouTube? 
Um, with that question, I don't know if how did I either start on YouTube or how did I get on YouTube. Uh, so Kevin, if you can actually uh, rephrase that that way, I know exactly what you're do uh, what you're asking. Um, <clears throat> then that would be great. So the next question is um, from Zach. Uh, don't know. <laughs> uh, uh, swing guard. Sorry, I probably just butchered that really bad. Um, but let's see. Uh, when do you know? You need, oh, sorry, Zach. Yeah, sorry. Um, I saw that you left three questions. So let's start with your first one. When do you know you need a new mower? Uh, basically, I would recommend looking at getting a new mower if constantly your mower is breaking down, um, and you're basically if you're working on your mower more than you're mowing yards, you need a new mower because. That mower is a tool, and if your tool is not making you money, and if it's costing you more money, it's time to get a new one. Uh, at the time when I had my, when I first started out, I had a Toro Zero Turn, and I bought it used because that's all I could afford, and it was absolute crap. It did okay in the beginning, but I did not get an even cut. I had constant problems with it. I was constantly working on it every single day, uh, keeping it afloat. So that's why I decided to just go ahead and buy a, uh, a brand new mower. It cost me, my first one was about 87, 8,900 bucks. That was the Hustler Fast Track with the banking system. Um, it's done amazing. And what I loved about buying it brand new, I haven't had that thing in the shop once for anything. Nothing's break on that, just the reoccurring maintenance. That's it. It was perfect. The only thing is, is if you're not making enough money to buy a brand new mower, don't put yourself in that financial situation. Uh, I was. We'll discuss that uh, in another time, but that was a good question. Let's go ahead and answer another one by Zach. Uh, do I need a dump truck? Um, that really depends on what you're doing. You know, if um, there's a lot of factors into that actually, and I can probably talk, you know, for an hour about do you need one and pros and cons and all that kind of stuff. But really look at and this is the best way I can probably suggest is look at um, what kind of yards you maintain. If you're doing just mowing, do you really need one? No. If you're doing large condo associations where you're filling up your truck every single day it probably wouldn't be too bad to look at investing in one. If you're doing landscaping work and you're constantly in need of a dump, then yeah, do it. <coughs> um, like I said, I can I can talk all day about this. Probably the biggest one is look at your finances. If you can afford one and your income, you have a good income coming in, then yes, I would probably recommend looking into one. They save a lot of time, dude. I mean, like with how much yard waste I can put in my truck, before, we used to have to disconnect the trailer, scoop everything out. That could take 20, 30 minutes. That time adds up uh, at the end of the day, especially in your busy season. Where now, all we do is we simply unhook it, dump the truck, hook it back at the trailer, and then go. So it saves a lot of time. It's very beneficial. saves your back. Uh, I mean, I can remember um, unloading my trailer, having the thing completely full of my open one, and took in like almost 30 minutes because I would get exhausted, especially in the heat. So if you can afford one, uh, then yeah, look at them. I would you know, constantly be looking on Craigslist. I see them all the time on Craigslist. Some of them, if you're looking for a nice one, they're pretty expensive, but you can pretty, you can get a, uh, at least an okay truck for maybe around two, eh, three, four thousand uh, dollars $4,000. But yeah, if you can afford one, get one. They are you know, just amazing. So we'll answer one more from Zach. Uh, let's see. Uh, if I get a new trailer, should I get an open or closed? That is another big question. I've been wanting to do a video on that for quite a while. Um, gosh, you know, it really, like like I said, that's one I can probably talk about another hour. You know, what's better, an open or a closed trailer? And really, it depends on where you live, what kind of yards you maintain, what kind of a, you know work you do. If you do lawn care and you're down in Florida or California or what's extremely hot, then maybe an open trailer might work out best for you. But what's nice about an enclosed trailer is that it, that's where areas where it's more known for theft. So you can lock up your stuff a lot easier. Um, gosh, like I said, I, I can talk all day about this. It really just depends on um, you know where you live and what kind of work you do. And that's, that's what you have to look for in the future. If you're just doing strictly mowing, you probably get away with an enclosed trailer. But if you're looking at, if you don't have a dump truck, if you just have a regular truck, uh, and you can use an open trailer for not only uh, your equipment, but also hauling yard waste or uh, any kind of landscaping materials, then maybe look at getting an open trailer. They're sometimes a little bit cheaper than an enclosed. Uh, you can put logos on both of them. And like I said, I can talk all, I can talk all day uh, about it, but... Hopefully that um, we'll cover that another time because, like I said, I can talk all day about that. So uh, thank you so much, Zach, for that question. Uh, that was a really good one. Let's see if we have any more. Uh, let's see. 
we'll answer one more and then we'll go ahead and call it good here guys and uh, i'm really enjoying this i can't believe we're almost an hour uh, we've been having people coming in and out but that's okay uh here let's answer this one uh let's see doing okay um this one from francisco gonzalez would you sell your f-150 for a new f-250 diesel when you extend um was actually looking at doing that uh, since I just got my F-150's head gasket replaced, that cost me about 2700 bucks with tax. Uh, I don't plan on selling that truck for a while. What I probably plan on doing eventually is keeping that truck and using it as a ride-around work truck um, and uh, for our, like our small yards and stuff like that, and then eventually upgrading to another 2350. So I don't plan on selling my F-150 anytime soon, no. Uh, I do plan on buying another big Super Duty truck, hopefully another dump trailer, another dump truck uh, with uh, another diesel because I love my diesel engines. Uh, so as of right now, no, I won't be selling the F-150, but yes, eventually I will be looking at buying an F-250 because uh, the thing that stinks is that I, I only have single cab trucks, and so I need a, either an extra cab or a crew cab for when we start extending into more employees. Um, because the snail cab is with that, the diesel, it's a stick shift. So it's really crammed. So anyway, so thank you so much, Francisco, for that. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. So we'll answer this. This, this will, will be our last, last all right, we'll, we'll have two more. more. We'll answer, um, one, one from, from Thomas Grand <coughs> and then, uh, one, one from David Hall. So we'll answer David Hall first. Do you ever have a contract customer that are late on their payments in November and December? I seem to have a lot. That rather overspend for the holidays than pay me. Um, with my contract, that's what I like about contract accounts is because they know that's a reoccurring payment. So luckily, I don't really have too big of a problem with people paying. The only problem I ever had in the past with people paying was with a, a company that I worked for for Walgreens. I actually wound up almost taking them to small claims court. Luckily, we sold it up before. But yeah, no, luckily I. Uh, I don't really ever have customers that are. I do have customers that do get that do get late in my invoices. I have a twenty-five dollar late fee. Uh, some guys do a ten percent of whatever the sales price is, but I just do a twenty-five dollar late fee flat. And I put in my con, uh, I put in my invoices must pay by this day. Uh, and if they don't pay that that day, I send them a twenty-five dollar late fee. Sometimes depending on the customer, if uh, if they've been consistent with paying me, then I don't charge them. Uh, but sometimes I'll fight it. And what I do, it's kind of sneaky, but sometimes you have to do it. Sometimes with commercial accounts, they don't want to pay a late fee no matter what. You'll Even though they sign a contract that says there's a late fee, uh, they will say, well, we're not going to pay that. So what I will do is I'll actually change the late fee and I'll put uh, irrigation repair or something like that. And they'll pay it that way. So it's kind of sneaky. It's deceiving. But they sign a contract. They said that they will pay if they're late and they're not being true to their word. So if I have to tweak it a little bit, that's what I'll do. Uh, so anyways, good question. Uh, this one's from KWAME. Uh, does anyone have the Echo PAS system? Is it good? I love the PAS system. I think it's good. It's the same thing as the uh, the Combi or whatever the steel one is. Uh, I honestly highly recommend the PAS systems. Um, it saves a lot of time. You're able to. You're not having to buy uh, full equipment. You can just buy the power head plus all the attachments. And I have quite a few attachments. I have the chainsaw, the articulating head, the straight head trimmer, uh, the regular weed whacking head, the metal blade edger, um, and maybe a couple, and then the uh, three foot extension. So I would really recommend the uh, the PAS system. They're really good. You'll like them. Next question is from uh, Thomas Grant. Oh, that's not even a question. Sorry. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, but uh, let's see. I really. <coughs> so all right. So this will be our last one. Hello, Hef uh, 360 from UK. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I really appreciate that. And hello, Extension uh, Gardens. Uh, appreciate all the hellos. This will be our last question for the day, guys. And uh, it is from, um, uh, let's see, ba -ba 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 -ba, where did it go? Uh, this one's from Zach again. Does anyone have the Edge Pro? That's more for you guys. So that's not really for me. Uh, here's one. How much is the, the 280, the uh, PAS 280? Uh, that ranges. I think they're around three hundred dollars. I think they're two ninety nine. Uh, depends on where you buy them. You can get them used, but I believe the two eighty is around two hundred ninety nine dollars. Uh, and thank you, Extension Gardens. I appreciate that. Uh, I really appreciate that. So, last question from K W A M E. Uh, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that. But uh, is the steel come by the worst? The price. I uh, don't have the steel, but I honestly, since I have the Echo PAS system, I will honestly say it really is worth the price. Because what happens is that if you have a power head, a weed whacker with a, uh, a you know, the power head and the weed whacker attachment, 
what stinks about it is that if that engine goes completely crap, then the whole thing is completely worthless, basically, unless you repair it. Where if you have the power head plus any attachment, basically what happens is that if something's wrong with the power head, you can exchange it with another one, and it, you can keep going. Like that tool, if you have a head trimmer, that's not completely gone, so I re really recommend that. <coughs> so anyways, it uh, looks like... Um, Bartlett, Yardworks, hey buddy, I love your videos. You got some really good high quality content. Be sure to check him out, guys. Big shout out to him. Uh, you should really look at the MS18 Walker that's coming out. Really good for small yards. I'll probably take a look at that. I really love my T25i, so I might stick with that because uh, I like having the same equipment. So, Anyways, guys, we'll go ahead and call that good. We're almost an hour into this. I am extremely sorry about... Um, uh, okay, we'll answer one question because this is from Extensions Garden, and uh, he just came in, so I want to be able to answer this. What what got you into gardening, whole culture, landscaping? Honestly, it happened when I was younger. There was a video of me that I found when I was one year one years old, and I was helping my mom mowing with a Honda mower uh, our yard, and I was just holding that little sidebar down below that they used to have on them, and just walking. I was one years old, and I just I love being outside. I love making something that's disgusting. You know, like a nasty yard and making it look amazing. I just have a passion for it. And I love what I do, landscaping. I love using power equipment. That's why I have so many tools. Uh, and that's that's just what I absolutely love about it. Uh, really, I had good friends um, that really just got me into that. Just being outside uh, and just working with tools and equipment is just absolutely love. Uh, you know, like it. When it comes to gardening, flowering and stuff, I don't like that. I'm more of the shrubbery, landscaping, big installs, hardscaping, rocks, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but that's basically it. So anyways, we'll go ahead and call that good, guys. Thank you so much. I will be posting this video. I might. I don't know if I'll do the whole thing. I might take it into parts and take uh, your questions and individualize them and then upload those. Uh, we'll see. I'm not sure. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm really sorry if the stream was really bad. Um... Hopefully, I'll be able to fix that next time. And uh, hopefully, luckily, you guys really enjoyed this live stream. Give it a thumbs up if you guys um, absolutely love this <coughs> this live stream because I would like to start doing it at least weekly where it's a Q&A but also talking about different subjects. So the beginning of the subject or this topic was how I started my business. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed that. I can always go further in depth and we can do another one. Uh, I'll be sure to post the next topic that we'll be talking about. Most likely it'll either become, either be about how to bid jobs or um, you know, how to do contracts or something like that. We'll figure it out. But thank you so much, guys, for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time on Ambrose Land TV.